Hi, this is Kevin Trainer, and I'd like to welcome you to my tutorial on installing the Oxygen XML editor uh, on uh, Windows uh, 7. So I'm making the tutorial for uh, primarily for the use of students in my class, although I'm thinking maybe others will uh, find their way here. And in my class, we're going to be using the Oxygen XML editor for an XML class. And um, uh, a lot of people are going to install it on Windows. I'm going to install it on a pretty fresh uh, virtual machine copy of Windows 7 64-bit. And the version of Oxygen that I'm going to be installing is uh, version 17.1. And it's a pretty straightforward install. And we're going to take it from here. So uh, the first thing that we need to do uh, is we need to go to the website for the... Uh, for the products, so that's oxygen xml all one word dot com. Okay, and um, what we want to do is uh, you can see that there's a portion of the page that is uh, dedicated to oxygen xml editor 17.1, that's what we want, and we want to download it. Um, for our purposes, um, people in my class uh, already have access to an academic license on our, uh, our uh, secure class website. And so we're going to be able to use that license code. For those of you who found your way here, um, when you download the products, you get a free you get to ask for a free 30-day license code in which uh, you can use the product as a demo. Um, and so um, you might be able to use that. So I'm going to click on the download button. And I see that there um, is a version for Windows 32-bit that includes a new version of Java. And there's one for 64-bit that also includes a new version of, of Java. And uh, I want the 64-bit version because I have 64-bit architecture. So I'm going to click on Download. And it's going to want me uh, to register. Now you can always, you, know, you can see that I'm already getting ready to download this. So I'm going to save this and we're going to get the download without having to register here. But I'd recommend if you've not registered on uh, the Oxygen site that you do it. Um, I've been working with the people uh, who make Oxygen for quite a few years now. They're really great people, and uh, I really love their products, and they do a good job of uh, keeping the people who use their product up to date. So you definitely want to be on their mailing list. Okay? But meantime, let's uh, see what we have here. Let's go look for the download. So downloads. Oxygen 64-bit. So let's uh, give that a double click and say run. And it looks like it's getting ready to do an install 4J wizard. English is my language. Tell them yes, it's okay. And so this is the beginning of the setup wizard. Uh, next. Accept the license agreement. Next. I want to put it in the standard place. So take the default and say next. Uh, put it in the start menu folder. 
next. Um, the only thing that I do that is not part of the standard install that I'm remembering at this point is that I would like XML documents to open automatically with the Oxygen XML editor, okay? I don't want them... I think the default for Windows is that they actually open with Internet Explorer. And um, we're not really going to be working in my class with uh, displaying XML documents directly with the browser, although it can be done. It's, uh, it's not really a... Uh, um, it's not really a high performance, uh, use case for XML. So I'm going to check the top box XML document. It's going to warn me, you know, that means it's not going to open up in, in, in internet Explorer. And I'm going to say, okay, I don't care. And then I'm going to check next. Uh, say I want an, uh, a desktop icon next. And now we're going to get a bunch of installs. So there's a lot of files to install. And I'm just going to pause our video while we wait for the files to install. So as not to bore you. And now I've resume the video because we've come to the end of all the files in installing. So we get a nice uh, dialog here where we can click finish. And it's going to open up the, uh, the licensing uh, dialog. Okay. And we can say that we want to request a trial license. And I think I'm going to do that. So let me request a trial license. Uh, get trial license. So it's going to want to know my details. And again, if you know where your real license is, you can use that. type United States of America for me license type um, in my case we're going to be using the academic license and um, now we're going to move on do I want to be notified on all this stuff well I don't really want to because I'm already on the list for all that stuff and here's where I pretend that I'm not a robot. So they're going to send me a license. And I'm going to bring up my email client. And there it is. And I've got a license key. And as I remember, you can you can include the the tags that say start license key and end license key. So I'm going to copy those. And now I'm going to come back to the machine that you guys are watching over. And I'm going to go back to the window where you can paste the license code. And of course, you can go through the effort of doing the paste manually, but there's a paste button. Uh, and that pastes in my trial license, which is a, a 31 day trial license. And I say, OK. And um, I'm kind of remembering that it fires up the product. Yep, it does fire up the product. And it's right there. So as long as we have the product here, let's let's just take a look. See, let's try to do something kind of basic. Okay. Um, I'm going to get rid of this uh, project window. 
And let's say we want to create a new file. So let's say file new. And let's create an XML document. Create. And you can see that uh, we have a lot of interesting stuff here. Now, one of the things that I find is that often the, um, the text, um, the default for the size and the, and the font used in the text is not really adequate for me. So how do I fix that? Well, I go up and I, I go to preferences, which I believe on this Windows version is at uh, options, preferences. Okay, and then under appearance, I'll take the drop down fonts. And it says monospace size 12. Okay, so let's go choose. And um, the one that I really like is Lucida Sans Typewriter. And let's just say we've got that. And we want it in size 14 uh, bold. Well, I could even use it a little bigger because I'm often teaching. Okay, so let's look at that. Now, that's what I really like. Okay, that's the typeface I'd like. That's about the size that I'd like. Because when I, I project it in class, it can be seen in the back of the room. So that looks good. And now we're going to do a simple XML document. This thing that we got here is an XML declaration. Okay, so um, a simple XML document has a root element. Uh, so let's just call it my, let's put this in lowercase, my capital D document. Okay. And then let's inside it, let's have a name element. And within that, let's have a first name, a first element. And I'm just going to put Kevin. And let's put a last element. And I'm just going to put trainer. And we have that. And um, uh, we have a concept that uh, people in my class are going to learn quite soon um, about the goodness of an XML document. And the uh, sort of the least amount of goodness that we want is a well-formed XML document. And what we mean by saying that is that we follow the rules of XML syntax um, so we, uh, we put the tags in the right spot. We have the right opening and closing for each one. You know, we follow the rules. So how do you check that? Well, if we go up to the toolbar, there is a, a red check mark. And if we click on it, it tries to validate the document against the schema. Well, we don't have a schema for this uh, document. So what we really have to do is we have to take that drop down triangle to the right of the check mark and we have to say we want to check well formedness and uh, check that and if you look down at the bottom you'll see a green box and document is well formed so yes it is so what if we break one of the rules of well formedness so, for instance, let's just take off one of the trailing angle brackets on the first line, okay? And you can see a couple things happen. One is that in real time, we get this red squiggly underline that, that it tells us that we have broken well-formedness. Um, and if we go back up and run, check for well-formedness, we are going to get a failure. Well formness test failed errors one. And then we get in the list of errors, 
element type my document must be followed by either attribute uh, the specifications or a closing bracket. Oh, forgot the closing bracket. Let's just put that back. And look what happened. That red squiggly line went away. So we don't really have to run this check. We can again, we'll check it again for well formness. We don't really have to check all the time because any time a part of our document breaks well formness, um, we'll get a red squiggly underline if we have things turned on the way they're currently turned on. Okay, and now we just have to save it. So I'm just going to say uh, file, uh, save as, and I'm in my documents library here. And let's just uh, let's just make a new folder called uh, my XML docs, and in there. Uh, that's interesting. If we double click on it, we'll go in there. Let's just call this uh, my first XML doc. And we saved it and it's right in there. So we've installed the product. We've uh, created a new XML document. We've explored a little bit of how to create a very simple well-formed XML document and how to save it. And that's all we're going to do today. I'm going to say bye until next time. Bye-bye.